all right? Um, so the first thing that we talk about when we get into the phonetics and phonology of sound system is the articulatory system. So basically just, uh, you know, a sagittal section of your head, because these are really important for you when you're speaking. So this is how it looks like. If you have taken 315 with me, you've seen this before. Um, if you have taken uh, 306 articulatory phonetics with the communication sciences and disorders department, you've seen this before. Um, so this is how the articulatory system looks like. You have um, lips and teeth, which are really important for you when you speak and when you produce uh, sounds. You have the nasal cavity, and then you have your tongue, which I often tell students. I mean, your tongue is the most important organ when you speak um, a, a language. Without your tongue, it will be, you won't be able to speak a language, right? We literally call it the dance of the tongue um, when you're talking and moving your mouth. So that's the tongue. The tongue has a tip and then it has a body and it has a root, right? So that's the structure of the tongue. And so, so like I said, we have a tip of the tongue, we have the body, which is the main uh, surface of the tongue. And then we have the blade of the tongue, which is just behind uh, the tip of the tongue. And all the speech sounds that, you know, you would produce in English, you would clearly use your tongue. Um, it, right now, when I'm speaking, my tongue is just dancing, right? It's moving into all these different positions in my mouth. And your tongues are not moving. Your tongues are just staying still, right? Because none of you are talking when I'm talking. So that's why it's called the dance of the tongue. Depending on where your tongue is moving in your mouth, you are able to produce all these uh, speech sounds. The other organ that is involved in uh, production of speech sounds is called the glottis. It's right here, right? The glottis, it's, it's the vocal cords, right? Right here, middle of your throat, right? So if you take your hand and put it in the middle of your throat right here, you can feel your vocal cords. The opening between your vocal cords, so your vocal cords are like this, and there's a little bit of opening, there's a teeny tiny opening in that, and that opening is called the glottis, right? The opening of the, the folds of your vocal cords um, is called the glottis. So why is the glottis an important organ in speech? Well, the glottis can either open or close. So it can, it can go like that, it can open or it can close, open and close. And depending on whether it's opening or closing, you actually get the air to come out of that opening, right? And depending on whether your glottis is open or closed, you get to make different kinds of speech sounds, okay? So when the glottis is closed, the air cannot leave the lungs, right? So it's kind of, you know, stuck in your uh, throat. And when the glottis is open, the air comes out freely and then you produce a uh, different kind of speech sound. When the vocal folds come very close to each other, it starts to vibrate, right? And that vibration is what we often call as your voice, right? So the vibration, Right now, if you know, I take my hand and I put it in the middle right here, I can feel my vocal cords vibrating because I'm talking, right? If you take your hand and put it on your throat, you're not gonna feel the vibration because none of you are talking right now, right? So if you open your mouth, you talk something, you take your uh, hand and put it right here in the middle of your throat, you will hear that vibration. And that vibration is what we call as your voice, right? The speech sounds that come uh, from your mouth. So we, we looked at the vocal cords, we looked at the tongue, and now there's the back of your mouth called the velum, right? It's right there at the back of your mouth, connecting your tongue all the way to the back. That position is called the velum. It's a really soft area at the back of your mouth. And um, to, to feel where your velum is, I want you all to open your mouth and say, k, k. Can, can you feel that all the way at the back, right? There's something right there at the back of your mouth that's moving when you produce this cur sound. That is your velum. okay? Try to put your, try to move your tongue all the way back there when you're saying k, k, k. It's difficult to do it because your tongue is kind of forward facing. But that 
part, if you can touch it, that's your velum. Your velum can actually move. Your velum can go up and down, up and down. Depending on whether your velum is up or down, you actually see that the air either comes through your vocal passage and out of your mouth, or it comes through your nose, right? And that's how you get nasal sounds, okay? So when your velum is lowered, then the air goes through your nasal passage and you can make your nasal sounds like m, n, 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 right? All those nasal sounds are made when your velum is lowered. When your velum is raised, the air has to go through your mouth and then you get all the oral uh, consonant sounds, right? So you get things like b, b, k, g, t, etc. Right in front of the velum is your palate. And we very often call it the hard palate because if you take your tongue and you move it to the top of your mouth, you can actually feel your hard palate. Yeah, or like Landon, you can put your mouth, you know, your finger in if you don't want to touch it with your tongue, right? Uh, so it's the hardest part of the mouth. It's just before the velum, as, as I told you. And to feel the hard palate, I want you to make the sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Take the tip of your tongue and touch the hard part on top of your mouth. That's your hard palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So what does a hard palate do? You can make some sounds like the yeah sound by putting your tongue on the hard palate. And right in front of the hard palate is what we call the alveolar ridge, right? So the alveolar ridge is just, uh, as you can see, it's coming towards the front of your mouth, right? And to feel the alveolar ridge, I want you to make the sound t, 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 t. The tip of your tongue is touching the alveolar ridge of your mouth, okay? When you say t, 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 that sound when you make that fleshy ridge just behind your top teeth is what is the alveolar ridge, okay? And then in between your alveolar ridge and your hard palate, you have what we call the alveopalatal region. It's right in between the alve alveolar ridge, which is just the back of your top teeth, and then your hard palate. So it's the area in between, right, your palate and your alveolar uh, ridge. And to feel the alveopalatal region, I want you to make the sound ch, 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 ch. So that's that's the portion in between your alveolar ridge and your hard palate, right? So ch, ch, ch. And then obviously, if you don't have teeth, you are not able to produce certain speech sounds such as th, 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 and th, th, th. As you can see, when you, if you're looking at my mouth, you can see that, you know, when I, when I say th, it's, Right? I need my teeth. If I don't have top teeth, I'm not able to you know, produce that particular sound or the sound th, for example. So your teeth are really important. I mean, you know, if you have old grandparents who don't have teeth, their teeth have fallen out or something, you know, they're not able to produce certain sounds like th and th, right? And your lips, again, involved in making uh, certain speech sounds such as th, 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 m, m, right? I mean, this is how we learn language. This is how we learn speech sounds. When you were a baby, you were just constantly looking at people's mouth, right? Your mom, your caretaker, your dad, whoever it was. And then you see that, oh, okay, I can actually move my tongue and move my lips and move my teeth and get all these, you know, um, different uh, sounds produced. So that's really how, uh, you know, we, we began to learn language and began to learn speech sounds when we were a baby. There are two major categories of sounds in language. We often distinguish between consonant sounds and vowel sounds in language. Um, you know, I'm not really talking about your written Roman alphabet where we talk about, okay, there are 26, you know, alphabets in the English language and there are five vowels, etc. There are way more than five vowels in the English language as we will see, um, you know, on Thursday. But we often talk about speech sounds being distinguished into consonant and um, vowel sounds. When we want to describe consonants, there are three different parameters in which we want to distinguish uh, consonants. 
we talk about voicing with consonants. Um, there are two parameters within that. Uh, a consonant can either be voiced or voiceless. And then there's a place of articulation. That's literally what I just walked you through, right? You have the alveolar ridge and then the alveopalatal region, the heart palate, the velum, et cetera. And then you get all these different sounds. Uh, that's a place of articulation. And the manner of articulation, which I will not be talking about to you in 151, but I do talk about that in 315, okay? So let's get into what is voicing and what's the place of articulation. So remember I talked to you about your glottis and your vocal cords, right? Um, which is right here. And I also said that when the vocal cords are vibrating, you actually get, you know, uh, different kinds of speech sounds. So the, when the vibration happens, when the vocal cords are vibrating, when the sound is made, that's called as a voiced sound. And when the vocal cords don't vibrate when the sound is made, that's a voiceless uh, sound. So you have a voiced sound and a voiceless sound, depending on whether your vocal folds are vibrating when the speech sound is made or not. Let's illustrate this with an example. So um, the, the two sounds that we will be producing today is the s sound and the z sound, right? They look very similar. They, you know, uh, very often children actually confuse the s sound and the z sound. Uh, because they look so similar, they sound so similar. There's actually only one distinction between the two sounds, and that's the bussing, right? Uh, between the s and the z. So I want you to take your hand, put it on your vocal folds, and I want you to say s, 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 s. Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything when you're saying s? s? Is your vocal folds moving? Do you feel anything? Now, I want you to do the same thing. Take your hand again, put it on your vocal uh, folds and say Zzz, Zzz. What do you feel now? There's some vibration there. There's a vibration there, right? So there's Zzz, Zzz, Zzz. What is this? Zzz, Zzz, Zzz. As you can see, it's really difficult for you to continue saying Zzz, right? What is this? is so much easier to do just because of the voicing um, aspect. You can bust like the bee, right? Uh, with Because of that, you know, voiced uh, sound. So as you can guess, the z sound is voiced and the s sound is voiceless in language, right? And this is true across languages. I'm not just talking about English. The same two sounds in any language z is always voiced and s is always voiceless. That's the thing about you know, the International Phonetic Alphabet, which um, the, the, I have posted copies on Blackboard, right? And if you haven't taken a look at it, I highly recommend you to download a copy of it onto your desktop because, uh, you know, there's some exercises that I will ask you to do today um, based on the IPA try. Okay, so, uh, uh, you know, I've given you this tip, take your finger and place them over your vocal cords and then you can, you know, hear the vibration of the Z and the non-vibration of the sin. So here are some examples of voice sounds in the world. And some of these actually look very similar to the Roman alphabet, right? Um, and some others actually don't, right? Uh, so here are some examples that you are familiar with. The B, B, D. Anybody who knows what the third letter of that on the top line is? Anybody who can pronounce it, Landon? It's da. Da, da, right? It's a retroflex. Da. It, does English have that sound? Nope, English does not have that sound, right? So we don't produce the da, da. We only have the d, d, right? Which is d, like in dog, right? But we don't say dog, right? Because we don't have that retroflex. There are a lot of other languages that have the retroflex. The, the, the sound after the retroflex da is a j, 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 English has that, but it's just written differently in the IPA chart, okay? So it's written J, J, and then you have the G, M, N, and what's the last sound on that? What's the last uh, letter on that top line? Anybody? Does English have that sound or not? What do you think, Landon? 
I happen to know that this is the ng, as in sing. Correct, sing. So ng, it's a velar nasal sound. So again, English alphabet is crazy. It's all over the place. It's not phonetic by any means, right? Which is why, you know, a lot of children have problems with spelling when they grow up because it's like, why do you write S-I-N-G? And then, you know, produce that as sing versus you have nasal with the same N sound, but that's pronounced very differently, right? Because English spelling is not phonetic. That, that's why it's uh, crazy. But that's a ng, it's a nasal sound. It's, a, it's, it's as in the sound ng in sing. And then we have the v, v, the z, the z, the z, and the l, all sounds of English, okay? And here are some examples of voiceless sounds in the world. So you have p, t, ta, ta, which English does not have, it's a retroflex, t, k, p, th, and s, all sounds of English other than the retroflex t. Um, I have a resource for you. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if this link actually still works because I know that the University of Iowa actually ran out of funding uh, for this particular you know, website. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but uh, this is a interactive link where you can check out all the voiced and voiceless sounds of American English. Uh, but I can also point you to other resources. And I, I think I already put up a little bit of resources on Blackboard as an announcement. So you should be able to access that. That, that is a little bit more updated link than this link. Uh, because this, this link, like I said, they ran out of funding. So I'm not entirely sure if they're still hosting this website. So, all right. So now what I want you to do is, I want you to take a look at your IPA chart. It's on Blackboard. Um, I have a couple of different IPA charts there. I have an international phonetic alphabet chart in your handout, which is the chart that I shared last class, which is all the sounds of all the world, world's languages. And then I have a different chart for just the sounds in American English, right? So I want you to look at the international phonetic alphabet chart, and I want you to identify the symbols below that represent these particular sounds. So take a minute to do that. And then I'll ask you, um, you know, to pronounce these sounds and then we will get into the, the, the IPA um, of it. So do you all have a copy of your IPA chart? If you don't, it's on Blackboard. So you can go there and download a copy of that um, right now. Um, and I'll give you about five minutes to do this. If you want to take a screenshot of this, then I can also put up the IPA chart on my end if that's easier for you to do. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, then, you know, um, then I can put up the IPA. Um, maybe that's easier. Can I stop sharing and share the IPA chart? Yeah? Okay. Wait one sec. Do we need to write down all of the? We're looking for all of these letters, right? Or all of these sounds, right? Okay, one second here. Let me write that down. Take a screenshot or, yeah. I'm Guys, I took a screenshot and I can send it in the group me. Okay. Oh, you guys have a group me. Awesome. <laughs> okay. I will share the IPA chart.
How many of you have seen this IPA chart before or taken a class that has talked about Mandin? I have to. I took, I think, was it 353 with um, Showstack, Professor Showstack? By one, yeah. 351, yeah. Sorry. 351. Okay. Two of you, Niall. Okay. So, a couple of you, you're very familiar with this chart. Uh, for those of you who have never seen this chart before, it looks like a lot, but once you understand where to look and what to do, it gets a lot easier. Um, and that that's the idea behind today and Thursday's class that you will get, you know, enough experience with looking at an IPA chart and, you know, understanding all this terminology and all that. Um, because one of the things that I do ask for your final project is for you to make a sound system. Uh, an IPA chart for your language. So it kind of looks like this, uh, obviously with not so much detail, but you know, if there, there have been students in the past who have added clicks and adjectives to their language, you know, and made it complicated, but you know, you don't need to do that. You can just keep the pulmonic consonants, the, the big chart at the top, the big table at the top, so. Okay. Um, Let's discuss the exercise. So the first sound that I had in there, did you all find that, could, could, were you able to find the sound in this particular chart right here? Uh, and I'm gonna ask Landon and Nayel and Olivia to be quiet because you've seen this chart before. So, you know, just for the purposes of this exercise, if the others, okay, so. Anybody else other than Landon, Olivia, and Nayel? Um, did you find the s, the s sound in the chart? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me what the description of the s sound is just by looking at where? So, you know, I'm assuming that this is where you saw the s sound, right? Right here. So, can you tell me the description of the s sound? What, what is a description of that sound? Fricative. Yes. Alveolar. Alveolar, yes. So that's exactly how you look at it, right? So you have sir right here. So you go up and you see alveolar, which is the place of articulation. And then you have, you go to this side and then you see fricative. That's the manner of articulation. And like, again, like I said, I'm not going to talk to you in detail about the manner of articulation. We will reserve that for 315. But you can see sir, alveolar, and fricative. Very good. What was the next sound? So the next sound is a d, d, d. So that's where the d sound is, right? And can you tell me the descriptions of the d sound? Plosive alveolar. Yeah, very good. Plosive and alveolar, right? So plosive alveolar is a d sound. Then you have a g sound right here, G. Anybody other than Kelly and Trinity? It's a velar plosive. It's a velar plosive, thanks Megan. Very good, that's a velar plosive, right? Velar is a place of articulation. So place of articulation, all these ones on the top, bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, postalveolar, retroflex, palatal, velar, uvular, pharyngeal, and glottal. Okay, and then manner of articulation right here, plosive, nasal, trill, tap or flap, fricative, lateral fricative, approximate and lateral approximate. Very good. Okay, the next sound. That this, this, so, sir, de, and ge are very similar to Roman alphabet, right? It's easier for you to find it. So let's try to find one that actually does not look like English. That's the next sound that is pronounced as a z. Z, Z. Anybody who found where that sound is on the IPA chart? Is it a dental fricative? It is a dental fricative. Thanks, Ephraim. That's absolutely right. It's a dental fricative, the Z, right? And the way to read the IPA chart is, let me try to enlarge it for a minute. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. Oh, perfect. So the way to read the IPA chart is there's a left-hand side and a right-hand side. 
the left hand side is always voiceless and the right hand side is always voiced okay so when you look at the dental fricative the th and the th the th, th is always voiceless and the z z is always voiced right so an example of this is basically let me see if i can try to annotate Okay, so can you see that annotation? Is that what I just wrote right now in blue? Okay, so so if you see a word like this, this, do you think that's a voiceless dental or a voiced dental? That's a voiced dental. That's a voiced dental, right? So you would write that with this right here, right? So this right here, right? Z, 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 this, this. So you can see how, you know, it, it's so confusing, right? Because TH looks like the voiceless dental, but when you produce that particular speech sound, you, you see that that's actually a voice dental. So that's why English spelling is really, you know, um, not phonetically um, correct. Uh, it's completely arbitrary that way. All right, the next, sound that we have is the okay so this is also not something that you would see in the roman alphabet so anybody who found that particular sound here okay so uh, the way that i have this particular sound is a little different so this is an affricate sound and the way that it is written on this chart is different. There are multiple ways of writing it. So um, yeah, London, Nayel, or Olivia, since you probably know this answer, uh, do you know where that particular sound is? The ch, ch. It's a voiced alveolar, right? Or is it just alveolar? Uh, it is, so um, Nayel says uh, voiced alveolar. So like are you talking about this sound? Is that what you said, no. Nayel? No, below it. I'm sorry, the east, the lateral fricative. The lateral... Down below it. This one, like right? Yeah, no, 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 oh. no. No, it's, it, yeah. So this one is a ch, ch, ch. Like it's, it's... Uh, what? The CH sound? The CH sound, yeah. Ch. Ch, ch. That's a voiceless post alveolar or alveopalatal affricate. Correct. So it's the palatal affricate, right? So it's the, it looks kind of like this, right? The palatal affricate. Yeah, right, Landon? It's a post alveolar. The post alveolar affricate, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The ch, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it, it would be that with a T in front of it, Correct. which is not on the chart because you can just write them together. <laughs> right, right. So this is a sh, right? This is a sh and a je, right? And then you have the affricates, which actually it, it's a combination of two sounds, right? It's a combination of the sh with the t, right? So it's a combination of this and this, right? So that's, it's a ch, ch as in church, right? So you would use that affricate, that ch, 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 church. So T and then that, this guy, right? So Nayel, I think you were referring to the post alveolar fricative, right? This, this particular sound, right, Nayel? Yeah, my brain had a, like a fart when you said that and I was like, oh yeah, I know the sound. And then I saw, that one, and I was like, wait, that looks similar to the picture, so. And you're right. I mean, you know, it is a combination of this sound, but this with the alveolar uh, plosive, right? So, so you're, you're on the right track there, okay? All right, so then the next one is the B, the B sound, so that's, um, let's see. There, right here, right, the B sound. 
So it's a bilabial plosive, b, b. And then you have the t, t, t sound right here. We just talked about it. It's an alveolar plosive, right? So the t. And then what about the next sound? Anybody who found the, the sound after um, t? What's the sound after t? Is it a plosive glottal? It is. It is a glottal plosive right here, right? It looks like a question mark without the, you know, the dot, right? It's a, right? It's, it's a glottal stop. This is the sound as in, uh oh, uh oh, that's a glottal, that's a glottal uh, plosive, a plosive um, stop, okay? And then the next sound after that, oh, that's a good one. Anybody who found that sound? The, the one after, the, the one that looks like a question mark? It's this guy right here, okay? It's an upside down R. It is an alveolar and it is an approximant and it's pronounced er, 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 right? As in the upside down R symbol of English. So very often the, one of the common mistakes that I see when you're, you're transcribing your R symbol in English is people don't use the upside down R just because in spelling you use the right side up, but the right side up is actually a different speech sound in the IPA, right? So that's how you would write your R in English spelling, but that is an alveolar trill, right? Anybody who knows how to pronounce that particular sound? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's, that, that is a very hard sound for uh, American English speakers, actually. If you speak Spanish, you probably would be able to pronounce that sound. I, I <laughs> physically cannot produce it. My, my tongue um, is tied to the bottom of my mouth, so okay. I can't stick my tongue outside of my mouth. Like, okay. So that's literally, that's literally the only sound in all of human language that I have found myself unable to pronounce. You're, you're not the only person. A lot of American English speakers cannot produce this. So, you know, if, if that makes you feel any better, but. <laughs> is, that that a, is it pronounced like R as in like uh, Eramos? Like, like what, Clara? Sorry? As in Eramos? Eramos? Sí. Okay. Yeah. So it, can you just isolate that particular sound and produce it for me if you can? R? Okay, so that okay, I think somebody else wanted to try too. Is it it's hard. just a rolled R? Is it a rolled R? No, that's this guy. That's the uh -huh. half that, yeah. So that's the da, da, right? When you get uh -huh. the rolled, the cap or the flap. This mm -hmm. is a trill. So anybody else who can, who know any Spanish speakers here? For the R? Yeah. R yes. Is that Kelly? It's Nael. Nael, yeah. We used to yeah. do that. We used to do that to our cats a lot when I was a kid. We'd <laughs> at them. Yeah. And so that one, that wasn't ever really hard for me until it was like putting it in a word, like making the sound by itself. Correct. It's easier yeah. than trying to say it in a word. Yes. And so it's been long enough now that it's easier for me, but it's a lot easier to just make the sound by okay. itself. Yes. Yeah, and it's so funny that, you know, uh, we used to do that to our cats too in India. Uh, we have the sound in Indian languages too. So um, we used to do exactly that to the cats. They did not like it. But yeah, it's a, it's a trill, right? It's a, it's not a sound that is easy for American English speakers. And like Landon said, this is probably the one sound that is extremely difficult among all these sounds in the IPA chart. Um, but that's a trill. So one common mistake 
that very often I see in students using this sound to transcribe your upside down R in American English. Don't do it, okay? Don't do that because this sound does not English, it does not exist in your English, okay? This is the sound that you wanna use, right? Uh, for your English um, uh, upside down R, okay. And then we have the th, which is the theta symbol. So that's a dental fricative, right? Dental fricative. And then the last sound is the p, p sound, bilabial closer. Okay. So I hope that you know you got some experience in seeing the IPA chart. The more practice you do, the easier it's going to be. Um, and we will do, you know, a little bit more practice. Um, Probably not today. I don't think we have enough time today, but uh, definitely on Thursday's um, lecture. So let's get into the place of articulation. I know we, you know, talked a little bit about it and how to find it in the IPA chart, but the place of articulation is literally where your tongue is at in your mouth when you produce that particular speech sound. So that's really where the place of articulation is. There are seven places of articulation. This is in English, um, but then as you can see in all the other languages, you have you know, um, a little bit more than seven places of articulation, uh, including things like uvular and pharyngeal, um, et cetera. But these are the seven places of articulation in English. It's labial, dental, alveolar, alveopalatal, palatal, velar, and glottal. So, these are the labial sounds. There are two different labial sounds. You can have bilabial sounds where you use both your lips to produce the sound. So you do p, m, p, m. And then you have labiodental sounds where you use your upper teeth and your lower lips. So p, p, b, b, right? So that's a labiodental sound. So two different kinds of labial sounds. And as the name you know, suggests, labial is a sound that is made with the closure of the lips, labial, with your labia, with your lips, right? The next place of articulation is your teeth. Uh, when your tongue is against your teeth, you can produce a dental sound. There are two examples of dental sounds and in English spelling, they look exactly the same. There's absolutely no distinction in English spelling. But the example is that of thin, thin versus that, that, right? As you can see, you can hear the difference between the th in thin and the difference uh, in the th in that. Uh, the first one is a voiceless sound. So it's th, th. And the second one is a voice sound. So it's z. Z, Z, so thin and that, dental sounds. And then you have the alveolar sounds where your tongue is against your alveolar ridge, so against the back of your top teeth. The sounds that you can produce with that are things like top and sat, t, t, top and s, s, sat, right? Your tongue is in the same position when you produce these two sounds. Then you have the alveopalatal sounds, which we just saw are uh, produced by placing the tongue against the alveopalatal region. Um, they are also called as affricates because they, they are a combination of two different sounds. So you have chat and you have jar. Um, and as you can see, the chat is voiceless, ch, 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 and jar is voiced. So you have j, 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 right? Chat and jar. And you have a palatal sound uh, by placing the tongue against your hard palate, that is your yard, y, y, y. This is another one that I've seen, it confuses American English speakers quite a bit when you have, you know, that spelling as a Y, but then you have to transcribe the IPA as a J, right? Because in your head, a J is always a J, right? And not a Y. So this is one that I've seen always confuses uh, students quite a bit. So if you can make a note that the J symbol in IPA is actually a Y, it's pronounced as a Y, not a J. Um, so as in yard, right? So you would transcribe yard with a Y, with, with, with that particular symbol. And then you have the wheelar sounds, cat and girl. And again, cat does not begin with a C sound. It begins with a K sound, it's a wheelar sound, right? Because a C sound in the IPA is something else. It's a different 
feet sound. So you don't, you again don't want to confuse these two things um, together. So the velar sounds are produced by placing the tongue against your velum um, at the back of your mouth. And then you have a glottal sound that's like the ha, ha, hat. Um, it, it is made by completely or partially uh, closing your vocal folds by, by opening and closing your uh, glottis. So, ha, 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 ha. So, this is a, a quick summary of what we have seen so far. We have looked at the consonants, uh, and I've, you know, I've taken the consonants of English in particular because it's easier for you to see. Um, but we will be talking about all the different speech sounds, and especially when you create your own language, I want you to use all the different uh, speech sounds in the IPA chart. Um, sounds of English, consonant sounds of English can be voiced or voiceless, and they can be nasal or oral, depending on whether the sound is coming, the air is passing through your mouth or through your nose, depending on whether your velum is raised or lowered. And then there are seven places of articulation, such as labial, dental, alveolar, alveopalatal, palatal, velar, and glottal. This is a lot of terminology. I do not require you to memorize anything, okay? Your exam is an open book because, I mean, you will have access to your IPA chart. So what is really important for me in linguistics is the fact that you understand what each of these mean, right? If I say alveopalatal, I'm not interested in whether you know the definition of alveopalatal. That to me doesn't make any sense, right? Can you produce an alveopalatal sound when I ask you to produce an alveopalatal sound? Where is your tongue in your mouth? That's what I'm interested in. In linguistics, I'm always interested in application, not in memorization, right? So I need you to understand the concepts and not, you know, like define palatal, define velar, define glottal. Like that doesn't make any sense to me, okay? So I know this is a lot of terminology, especially if this is your first linguistic class, but what I'm trying to say is that understand the concept for what it is, okay? That's, that's what I'm gonna test you on, okay? All right, so again, I've given you that link uh, for places of articulation and you can, you know, again, I have other resources on Blackboard uh, in, an, in an announcement that I made. So you can also check that out. Um, for a lot of students, I have found that having an interactive map really helps when you, you know, hover over the sound and then you can hear that particular sound, it really helps to drive home the point of what that particular sound is. So that's the idea of giving you these charts to actually see, you know, uh, play around with it to understand what the sounds are. All right, so this is what I wanted you to do. I know we are out of time. We have about one minute, but I've given you descriptions of certain sounds. I want you to look at the descriptions, go to your IPA chart and then find the symbol that actually is this particular sound, okay? I know we don't have time for this now, but you can do this at home and then we can discuss this on um, Thursday. So if you wanna take, again, a screenshot of this, uh, feel free to do that. Um, the recording will also be up on uh, Blackboard, so you will have access to this. But this is, I think, where I'm going to, oh, I, I had two exercises. So if you wanna uh, do this as well, uh, so this example is I've given you sets of four different sounds and I'm asking you to find the one sound that is different in place of articulation from all the other three. Okay, so find the odd sound out, right? Find the odd sound out in terms of places of articulation. And again, if you want to take a screenshot of this, um, feel free to do that and we can discuss on um, Thursday. Manner of articulation, I'm not gonna go over this in detail, um, but as you know, if you look at the left-hand corner of your IPA chart, that's your manner of articulation. You only need to know how to find the manner of articulation by looking at a chart, but I'm not gonna be talking to you about this in detail. You can take 315 with me if you wanna know more about that or acoustic phonetics, um, linguistics 306 or linguistic 506, all right? That is the end of today's lecture. And I know we're out of time. Any quick questions before we go? I have a quick question. Quick. Um, okay, so for my assignment, I had like, I didn't write it in my actual paragraph form for some reason. And then I saw that it said like max three pages. Um, and so does it need to be typed in like a, like a cohesive like paragraph? No. Or I, I have it like sectioned out. 
yeah, did you not see my message that tables are completely acceptable uh, for this assignment? I had put that um, that announcement up on Blackboard. I, I oh. hope you saw it because uh, this is not an English class. I'm not testing you on your writing skills. And I actually honestly don't care about your writing skills, okay? I know this is being recorded, but <laughs> uh, what I am interested in seeing is, uh, you know, whether you are able to find that information, you can put it in a table form. I love tables, I'm a linguist. So, you know, I don't really care about your writing. So anything okay. that is easier for you to do, just give it to me, just give me the- Okay. Yeah. Please That's what I thought, but then I went over the instructions one more time and it said like three pages and I was like, oh, this needed to be like typed like a paper paper. No, so I had no, kind of that, okay. Because I don't want you to draw me a table which is five pages long. Right, if, if that helps. I mean, for, for a lot of students, I have found that having a page limit really works well, you know, and that's why I kind of have it over there. I, I was gonna say we are off, uh, the, the, you know, you, you're above time. If you wanna drop off the call, feel free to do that unless you have a question. You can stay on if you have a question. I'm happy to stay on, but feel free to drop off the call as well. Can you show the first exercise again that we have to do? Oh. Oh. All right, got it. Okay. Anybody wants to see the second one? If you want to take a screenshot of that or we got them both in the group me. All right. Great. Any other questions? I know we're out of time, but I'm happy to stay on if you have questions. Um, I was just wondering about the site that you showed us on the last slide. It said it had all the English sounds, but I think last semester in 315, you showed us a site that had all of the APA, IPA sounds yeah. that we can like, click on in here. Is that on Blackboard? Yeah, I think I put that on Blackboard, but if let me go and revisit that post that I put on Blackboard and make sure that that's the same site, site as the one from 315. If okay. not, I will put it in another post on um, Blackboard. But but yeah, thanks for letting me know that, Tara. There's okay. a lot of resources for IPA. So, you know, it's about finding the right one. So. Yeah, I just think it'd be helpful because like, I just want to associate the sounds with the symbols so that I can like get to know them better. Okay, that sounds great. I will do that. I can definitely do that. Okay, thank you. See you Thursday. All right. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all on Thursday. Bye.